This is Hacking the Afterlife podcast with Jennifer Schaefer. Let me just begin the podcast this way. And again, like I say, if you know okay. things, okay. if things work out, that's great. If they don't, we don't have to worry about it. All right. Um, okay. And Menla Online is listening in. So very good. Um, so, I'm so happy to meet you, Jennifer, because I, I loved uh, finally catching up with Rich's work and then hearing about all the things you two have been doing was just blew me away. And also a lot of people, we had 900 people at that conference and they were all sitting out. It was really quite marvelous. Wonderful. Wonderful. I feel very lucky to have tracked Richard Martini down a few years ago. (laughs) Well, allow me just to introduce you two guys to our podcast, which is to say this is the first time we've ever had a live person on our podcast. We've only had people on the flip side join us. And it was at your suggestion the other day, my dear friend, my old friend, Robert, who has been a teacher and has taught so many people worldwide. I really appreciate you making the suggestion. And I thought, what the heck, why not? And so I'm going to do my best to be quiet, which is really hard to do, but allow that you and Jennifer to speak. And if I have anything I want to add, it's just my little angelic face over here in the corner listening in. So welcome to our podcast, Hacking the Afterlife. We have Robert Thurman graciously, uh, generously allowing us to talk to him. And of course, you all know and love Jennifer Shaver. Go ahead, guys. Jennifer. So I just wanted to say myself before we begin that I am, um, uh, yesterday I, I really almost broke down, but I was feeling very joyful too. But I was reading a certain section from the sutra that I've been reading and that plays uh, sections of that reading come on Saturday nights. It's called Saturday Night Live online. (laughs) But anyway, I had jumped way ahead from where that broadcast is. And I was reading a very advanced uh, sutra, a short one, about the inadequacy of number or the hugeness of number in the universe. You know, how many zillions and quadrillions, even nonillions, I don't know if that's the right number, but you get the nine, you know, nonillions, octillions and nonillions and decillions. And um, I just flipped about all the ma- miraculous things that happened. And then I just got caught up in this, my own frustration that I cannot magically affect the mind in a positive way of an insane killer like Putin. And this terrible disaster that is happening to these nice people in the Ukraine, resonating for them with times when Stalin killed like 4 million of them and stole all their food and had reduced some of them to cannibalism, practically. I mean, really terrible. And all kinds of other disasters they have suffered at the hands of the Russians. And they've been trying to be separate from them since the Tsar's time. You know, the, the, the Tsars, the Russians have always wanted that southern area, you know, and, and yet the people are not Russian. <laughs> they are Slavs, but they are not Russian. And um, so I just got into that. And, you know, how can... Who can help him find the humanness in his heart that must be there, but is so hardened because of having so done so much killing in, in many places, you know, Syria and Chechnya and I don't know where all else, and even in his home city, you know, right. of his opponents, you know. So anyway, that's on my mind. I just wanted you to know. Uh, and I think that's, I mean, you know, for us, of course, when you speak to Bob, it's like speaking to the Akashic Library. You basically have <laughs> access to right. information of many lifetimes. But at the same time, you know, what we've learned, Jennifer and I have learned in this research, is that if you have somebody who knows somebody, you can isolate that down to the point of speaking to someone's higher self. The idea of there is a portion of Putin's yeah. conscious energy yeah. that's back home. But in our yeah. case, and and the best way to give an example is to let Jennifer focus on you, because as soon as I told her that you might be available, she Anyways. she started to tell me a number of people <laughs> that wanted to talk to you. And so let's allow them. They're okay, okay. Please the go construct, ahead, Jennifer. Well, the, go, the construct is this. There's a classroom. Our friend Luana, Luana Andrews, is on the other side with a list of people who've arrived, shown up to converse. And Jennifer will then ask Luana, Who's at the top of the list? Who okay, wants to talk I'm, to Bob? I'm open. I'm more open. Okay, totally very good. Open. It was, and thank you for that. Um, so I want to tell you a little bit of, 
so my day yesterday, just real fast, um, I had this incredible sense of peace. And a lot of times before I read someone, their loved ones on the other side or their mentors or whoever is around them comes to either check out what I'm doing wrong or what I'm doing right. I don't know. But I had this incredible sense of peace. And I, it's been and it was just a brief moment last night that I received this peace. And I'm like, I know this is it. It was just it kept going. And I'm like, OK, I appreciate this. But I got the most amazing feeling coming from your loved ones that they that's what they represent is peace and love and wanting the planet to be better and i'm i'm you know like it's bittersweet cuz of what you said how you you feel this despair but yet you also feel hope or you yes. also feel and that's how i felt last night i felt so i felt very peaceful, peaceful last night it's very just that it, we didn't need to Right. I had extraordinary peace actually meditating last night. Yeah. So you may be picking up on that. Yeah. And then I'm feeling, but how come I cannot project that peace into the heart of this man so he doesn't dig himself deeper into the hell that he's creating? You know? That was what, what I'm, you know, yeah. it's, like it's capable of both at the same time, you know. Well, if we can, let's see if we can identify some of these individuals that contacted Jennifer to bring okay, that okay. feeling of peace. Okay, okay. So Jennifer, it, yeah, we kind of do it. We, yeah, we kind of do it this way. <laughs> we we kind of do it this way. So who's in the chair, Jennifer? Okay. I can I can uh, think of people see, I'd like to just invite. So you know, I just have this for That's my That's all husband. she knows about you. That she all. just knows and that know your that name I, and your daughter, who your daughter is. That's oh, it. Yeah. That's it. But that's I and I know that you only only because in 2013 I was there at the conference with the Dalai Lama in New York with uh -huh. what you did for you know with what was in New York and so yes. yeah and so um my dear friend she's it meant so much to her that she, my dear friend Sonia that she paid for my trip she's like I want you to be here it's that important to me that you go to this conference for three day, three days and oh. so it was magnificent so I do I I am I do know that, but um, oh. it's, uh, let me see. There was something that happened this morning. Um, give me a second. I feel like there's one person that you really, 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 really want to talk to. Okay. That's what it feels like. I know there's several over there, but I don't know why that was brought up to me. Um, so give me a, and when I get, when I get quiet, that's just me going into it. Okay. Um, there was someone I feel that passed away. It feels like around September. And I don't know if that was last year. I'm not sure. I'm just trying to figure it out. Just bear with me. And I do feel like this, this person was sick. And so I don't know if they even had COVID. I'm not sure, but it feels like this person was sick. Um, And I feel like you used to mentor this person. Does that ring a bell at all? Is it a male or female? Yeah, well, they've, I've mentored a lot of people and a few people have been dying. Right. And I'm uh, not trying to generalize it either. Probably, maybe a little later than September, but yes, he was okay. going a little in September. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And he said that he used to, I feel like he's saying he used to travel with you everywhere or he used to travel with you. A bit. Well, if it's what I'm thinking of, okay. Tom is his name, but uh, not too much, but uh, yeah, a little bit. Okay, hold on. What did you say his name was, Bob? His first name? Tom. 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 Does that ring a bell or? Travel could have, travel, yeah, it does, because she went like this, but travel could mean. She does this with her nose when it means yes, <laughs> correct. So that's what she sees from Luana and those people over there. They're like, yep, they got it. So it Tom. <laughs> So is uh, uh, let me just clarify. Is, so it, let's ask Luana. Luana, is this Tom? Is this Bob's friend Tom who passed away? Is that yes or no? Correct. Could be yes. yes. Really All right. So and let's just allow first. Let's thank Tom for coming to talk to us. We appreciate it. And Tom, before you get into what you want to tell Bob about your journey, who was there to greet you, Tom, when you, you crossed know what? over? I have to. <laughs> so he was trying right, to interrupt me. Go ahead. He's trying to say some things. Just give me one more second um, before we go into that. He said, when you when they talk about travel, you travel what 
just meditating. So it could have, and that's what it felt like. I know that he might've gone to one or two places, but that's what it felt like to me because mm-hmm. I can see what you do. You can travel from everywhere from where you're sitting. Sure. Sure. I know that. So, let, and I just, that's was a clarification that just came in. Um, go okay. ahead. Oh, well, I'm just asking. So Tom, what do you want to tell us? Are you, you're aware of what we're doing. Uh, this conversation, has you ever done this before with anyone, Tom? Talk to somebody on on this side. He says he talks to him. He to talks Robert. to Bob. Okay, yeah. and if you could sh- if you could show Jennifer a time that po- that Tom came forward and and had a conversation with Bob, whether he's aware of it or not. Um. Were you guys writing a book together, or was there a book element that he was writing with you? Or something like that, or an article. Uh, he was making a. He helped me make a film. He helped you make a yeah, film. I, I talked seventeen thousand people with. So I think, and at the time he died, maybe more since then, which was put out in the edX thing from Harvard, sort of on introducing the Tibetan view of the world and so on. Okay. And he okay. he 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 filmed like two years of my lectures, and he was very distressed upon dying, that he couldn't finish organizing it all into a bigger thing. He also had footage of the Dalai Lama and so on. And uh, we had to sort of, his wife and I had to kind of say, it's okay, we'll follow up. You know, we have the it all on the computer. We'll get someone to follow it up and so on. He said, so everything makes sense. The way that he showed me, I saw, I don't know if it was Mount Kailash, but I know that's something that Richard, you know, that's just my, what was in here from Richard. But it felt like, again, when I said books, um, it just felt like a chronologue of everything. I just need to give me one more second with that. He mentioned that a week before he passed, um, he was at peace. Like mm-hmm. it was a week before that he passed. So we had- kind of tried to get him to think about traveling himself well and not worrying about not finishing the project. He was very grateful. Mm-hmm. He says, mm-hmm. Thank you. He says mm-hmm. that you put him at peace and you put my wife at peace. And I believe that he, um, I don't feel that he had children, but I feel like he was a father to many. I don't know. He, had, that, a, he had a child. He had one he child. He was also supportive of many people. He okay. was supportive of many He's people. showing me so many different people. Give me a second. He was thrilled that the person that was actually, I feel like working with him was able to finish it. I know that you talked about that, but I don't, there was somebody else that was involved with the film. That was yeah. able to finish it. Um, and I feel like the person that helped, the, the person that was finishing it said that he was talking to Tom. Tom said he was talking to him as he was finishing it when he had lots of questions. Yeah. Well, it hasn't been moving too much since he passed, but it, it, that, that person is, will be on board, I'm sure. You know? Okay. They, if they haven't done, at least I have not kept track of what they've been doing. Okay. He says, you don't have to. It feels like it's, it almost feels like January of 2023. There's something with that. I don't know. Well, you know me, I always, when we talk about the future, I say, well, that's a possibility. Right. But yes. but let's ask if Tom, if you don't mind asking our standard questions that we ask people that we talk to over there. So what was it like for you when you crossed over? Was it what you expected it to be or was it something different? It's not what he expected. It was more than that was more than that. And who greeted you when the you peace. crossed? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Just describe the process of crossing over. The peace and the bliss that he's feeling that he felt crossing over is what you read in books, but you're not sure. You know, you are, but you're not even at his stage with, with how sick your body might be. And so. And is that an ongoing feeling? He, said, he says it was blissful. Um, that's an interesting question. Hold on. It is. So it's ongoing. You're always feeling yeah. that blissful feeling. Yeah. And and just in terms of your life, just a couple of quick questions. Did you fulfill what you feel like you signed up to do in this lifetime? He says no, but I think he's a tough critic of himself. <laughs> well, it could also mean that he's planning to do it in the future in another journey, because of course your body of work is your body of work. And it's interpretation, but he's showing me like this. He's going like this. It's just a fraction. Fraction of what he his overall whole, picture. Whole picture. Beautiful. And he's like, and I felt like I did a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it is nice. 
right? But he said, and he's showing me like the magnitudes of the um, of the people that it affects, you know, of whatever what you do here and the magnitudes of whether they know it or not, the chanting and the praying and and making the world a better place. Mm-hmm. He's like, well, as here, we do over there. So because we can, Tom, let me ask you a specific question. This issue that Bob was talking about earlier, talking about an individual for whatever reason is playing a role of a of a, a sort of a leader of whatever, and he's causing chaos and, and problems. And, and that might have been what he signed up for. We don't know. But is there any way we on the planet can help change or affect that person. Okay, I, I saw that. What happened, Jennifer? No, the whole class came forward. So just give me a second with that. Um, there was a bunch of people I think that want to weigh in. That are collectively weighing in. Hold on. I'm feeling that it's almost like you can't do anything when they can't hear you or when it's broken. But the praying that you do is for everybody around that person and for everybody that's um that's being subject, you know, subjected to the pain and the terror. I keep asking, he says, there's nothing you can, they're saying, there's nothing you can do but pray. Mm-hmm. Chant. Pray and, and put that vibe into the into the universe. So, so Tom, if I may, there are a number of people who want to talk to Bob that are yes. on this list here. And so that, was, had- that was Luana <laughs> talking. Oh, that was Luana. It's like yeah. stepping inside. Who yeah. else wants to come? In? Who's on the list there, Lou? You have any sense to of the Dalai Lama? Let's say again. Yes. Of, he's not passed, but I mean, do you have any sense of his his presence? You mean Tom? No, the Dalai Lama. Hold on. I'm saying Jennifer. Okay. Dalai Lama, you it gets very very. Stressed when this kind of terrible thing happens. You know? Well, yeah. if I may, what, if his, I, what, go ahead, Jennifer. Sorry, it's okay. His um, blood pressure feels like it goes up more than it should. Um, uh-huh. He's he's a seer of everything, and so he's able yeah. to go into like every single place. It's interesting the way I'm viewing it. Like I'll go to one person, but he'll go into a whole country. He'll go in and look at everything everywhere. That's what it feels like. Yes, yes. And he feels all the pain, but he has a very strong bliss energy. Just wondering if he has any recommended course of thought or action. I actually wrote a 10 point peace plan myself, but you know, but uh, just in the air, you know, just to put it into the, yeah, psychic atmosphere. There's something about the number eight that I was getting when you were mentioning ten piece. Oh, okay. <laughs> so eight, eight are accurate. Two, not so much. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. The eight, maybe the eighth section. I'm getting like the eight. oh, the number eight, the section eight that yeah, was in the essay. That's the one to focus on. How powerful it is. Um, Sorry. Are you getting feedback by chance? It no. almost sounds like somebody's like writing. It's probably just mine. I'm sure there's a lot of. I'm surprised that we've lasted this long without something going off, <laughs> going wrong. No, no. Uh, you mean like a, a hum or something like that? Yeah. No. That's usually okay. Um, I feel him being very positive that it won't end up the Dalai Lama. I feel him being very positive that it won't end up in war, nuclear war. That's what it feels like. So that it will end up in nuclear war. No, yeah. that it won't. Oh yeah, so good. I think so, I think so too, but, but yeah. only was of angelic intervention, actually. I'm afraid. Yes, I, I agree. It is angelic intervention. Thank you. I'm glad you said that. And there's Thank something you. there's something about you know about um, March. It almost feels like March thirty first. Hold on. March twenty first. Thirty first. Thirty first. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Richard hates for me to get there. <laughs> no, no. I just, I like to point out there's, that there's Jennifer is. Very, happen, there's something around Putin over the 31st, it feels like. That's, so. what, that's what it feels like. And Jennifer is very good at saying that, which is it could okay. happen that way. If everyone okay. obeys the way they're supposed to obey. I just wanted to point out an unusual construct that Jennifer and I tried and were successful at 
where I asked to speak to the 13th Dalai Lama, where we had a conversation. And the idea that packets of time contain all the information of a person's previous lifetime. And Jennifer mm -hmm. correctly identified Charles Bell and, and other stuff about, uh, about his journey. And we were able to ask him how much of his conscious energy is now here on the planet. And I forget what the number was, but it was a lot. But the idea that you can access somebody's higher self and, and then examine like a specific detail of a time period. But it was anyway, it was very profound for me. And I just wanted to mention that when you mentioned his holiness, there it's almost like we can access his higher self. So in that construct, Luana, do you want to help us with that? Is that something that that I mean, I would like to see if Bob can talk to his old teacher. Okay. Even though he's back on the planet, his higher self is not on the planet and would remember everything about Bob. I don't know, Bob, would that be something okay. you would- so Is that something that, is that, okay, so let me just go, I'm gonna get different details with this person if that's okay. Go ahead. Okay, cool. so there's something about, something about when you were 32, it feels yeah. like around that time period. I don't know what it has to do with him, but there's something that changed you around that time period. Does that make sense to you? Uh, yeah. Okay, and then whatever, whatever happened i felt like there was no looking back by the time you were 39 just absolutely no looking back of whatever <laughs> whatever was back there like everything then made sense to you 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 were um i felt like that's when you stepped up to who you are now does that make sense to you uh, sort of i, I was just uh, finished my phd and when i was 31 Okay. I started teaching when I was 32, and I had reunited with Dalai Lama when I was 30, and that was really great. Yeah. And, um, and uh, as a layman, you know, having been a monk before, and the kids were little at that time. And another, another uh, when I was 32, a third child was born, a son, and I was building this house. Wow. And it, was, it was a very good time. Watergate had happened. We got rid of Nixon. <laughs> uh, and then you know that was uh, around that time that summer it was a powerful time uh, i don't know about then later looking back but you know because it's pretty much been off to the races with me <laughs> that's what <laughs> i felt like in, after that, if nothing was hold maybe i should have said nothing held you back after that there was I, uh, thing. <laughs> you had, but it, you already had a purpose but now it was just it was more clear to you that's what it felt like. Yeah, you know, something like that. Yes, yes. Yeah. I think so. That's probably right. Sounds and right. Did you there at 43? Hold on. Did he pass? Was there a did he pass, I'm sorry, I don't know this for sure, but was there something around 53? When I was 53? Either when you were of age or 1953. I was only 12 in 1953. Yeah, no, I think when you were, it was when you were 53. It either had to do with your teacher or there was a passing at that point. Um, 53. Or did he pass away at 53? Um, father passed away around 52 or 53. Your father? Uh, at his age, of his age. You know, I was, uh, I was in my 20s and I found my Mongolian father you know, my teacher, Geshe Wangel, who I think Rich was talking about. Yeah. And he's been very present with me always, uh, Geshe Wangel. Yeah. Um, he's, a, you know, someone who visited the house who's a little bit has the open door and, the, and the, like yourself, said he was really all over here, very, very uh, protective and friendly and helpful. And uh, I feel that. Yeah. He says you, you, especially in your dream state, in your dream state, it get, um, hold on. Maybe it's because of what's going on. The last few nights in your dream state have been a yes. little. Yeah, I've been very involved with the, with the Ukraine. Yeah. 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 I, you know, thinking about peace and what it would take to have the Russians back down, which they really need to do, you know, sooner rather than later. I keep getting that it feels like from what I'm being shown, it's going to be somebody from the inside, not the outside. That's going to have to do that. Maybe. Could be. 
maybe with the pressure from the outside, but it's um, yeah. right. That's what it feels like to that's me. Um, that's, that's the way. That's the way to pray. The way to pray that the, that the guys who are on the hell bench, you know, that something inside them softens, and we have yeah. to sort of try to nest there or try to be there, or something for their own good. You know, I think. Because they are only reinforced by perceiving enmity from outside. All right, I'm going to ask Luana a question a bit yes. because I can. Lu, Lu, there was a moment when Bob and I were on Mount Kailash together, and Jennifer doesn't know this, but there were two individuals that Bob encountered in his mind. Correct sure. me if I'm wrong, but he encountered them in his mind. And Luana, I want you to sort of freeze that frame for Jennifer and bring those two fellas forward because i i'd like bob to be able to ask them a couple of questions is that possible let's see uh well luana will tell us she'll say no yeah. they're busy yeah i was 54 at that age when that happened i was 54 years of age okay okay That's when that happened there was two how did i know that former lives so that's backup see you're in the backup you're exactly <laughs> what i was trying to get to or whatever but let's ask these two dudes are they available can, can you they give me their since i work with their me. first names bob do you remember their first names she no. works with names I so know name one of them but i it's i cannot speak it okay but, so uh, but let can you give but, us uh, the first letter the first letter of the name like r a b c d e f g first letter well uh, uh p p all right, so that'll help Jennifer because if two people show up, one of them's got the name P, Mr. P, and the other uh, one might be a J. P and J. Uh, J and P. Jelly. All right, very good. The older one was a J, and the newer one was a P. So, okay. Luana, if you don't mind, could you invite P or if they are available? I don't know if this is what you want on your list, Lou. No, they've been waiting patiently. They've, they've been waiting patiently. But all right, all right. I and want to go back to one thing, his mentor that he's that's always with you. Yes. Okay. One like to your shoulders to relax you. <laughs> and is that P or J? No, that that's was either of them. That's my teacher. Oh, no, your teacher. teacher that okay, okay, okay. Sorry. He wanted to make sure because he keeps doing that because of what you're because of how much you feel with what's exactly. happening. Um okay, P and J. Okay. Hold on a second. Did they tell you? Um, did they tell you about the vision that you had? Did they tell you who was getting reincarnated or where they were going into? Well, no, actually, it was a really weird one where they okay. they they normally hide from me. They it, it, you know it's clear for for reasons and. Um, which I understood, and but they were talking to each other, because and they temporarily lost their shield or whatever it was, because they were so excited with the place I was. I was looking at the mountain Kailash, and they had never gone there, and they had always wanted to go there, and they were amused and kidding each other, that that they 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 knew much more about what I was confronting there in the mountain, the, you know, the deities of that mountain. Than I did at that time, and uh, but they are they and they only got and that they couldn't go there during their lifetimes, and that now they're there as me, and they were chuckling about that and they were sort of expressing amused, like they, they were amused envy, in the sense like oh, I wish we'd been there as as ourselves at our different time, but now we're here as him, and they were kidding around about me, you know. But they were, and that then revealed their presence to me. And, uh, but they didn't, didn't address me in any way. In fact, then they disappeared when I tried to catch up with them. They disappeared again because I think I know why. It's okay. Well, let's ask, let's ask them. Let's ask them. They're here now. Let's it might have them. to do with the 13 dollar Lama, actually. It has something a little bit to do with Okay. That. So it felt like it had to do with that, but it also felt like, I guess, if it's interpretation, you can only, so if they were acting like you or being you. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm like the real. Yeah. Well, they were amused that I was being them. Right, right, <laughs> exactly. Um, no, they're around all the time. It feels like, but they also, they probably are. Wow, 
That's uh, it's interesting to know though, because that was my. Is there somebody that controls the wind and the earth, like the elements of the earth, like the storms and the the chaos a little bit? Not chaos, but just the. Why am I being shown that? Hold on a second. Uh, well, I I have a dollar weather connection. I'm a Leo, and uh, you know I have a kind of stormy lightning thing. <laughs> okay, because I keep seeing. I do, and, I'm and, not uh, sure and I, I like lightning. When I was a kid, they used to call me Thor. And uh, I'm a weird, everybody else in my family was brunette. I was only blonde, like, and I was like a Viking, you know, and so yeah. more with the hammer, you know, and the, the lightning. But I've always had little, little stormy things. Wow. You know, okay. And I like storms. I like lightning. And storm. I like being near it. Uh, it's true. It's Do you true. Ever, were you ever asked if you caused it? <laughs> to do what? If, if you, you caused ever, it. If, if you, you were the cause it. of the... No, no, no. If you were able to do anything like that, like well, like well, <laughs> you know, if I if I was able to do something like that, I would turn back a Russian tank column for sure. I know. However, I have seen you annihilate people in debate, so no. I know that you have lightning bolts of logic. <laughs> no, so, well, if I may, Jennifer, there, I, I just want to go back to your image there for a second. So, this idea of seeing weather and the changing weather and are you seeing wind or are you seeing, I'm seeing lightning i'm seeing someone blow and having wind be like i'm seeing all of it so a wind horse let me just ask is that related to a wind horse let's ask that person is that what you're referring to a wind horse that is that what, like that. yes Give that's us what a, i'm saying I okay don't know. the reason i, I ask it is that. because during a session with somebody else they saw their guide as a Tibetan and he started talking about wind horses. And so I, of course, had to look it up because I didn't know what that meant. Bob knows what it means, but Jennifer does not. And I just want to clarify that. Bob's a wind horse. Is that correct? Who, in what you mean? I'm what? asking, I'm asking J and P, is Bob oh, see, a see. wind horse? Is that correct? Is that what they're saying, or is that yeah. that is okay? Yes, Bob, yes. you would understand the metaphor, which is you're a, a a teacher of truth, like a flag on a mountaintop, and every time it flaps, it tells another truth. So you're <laughs> a wind horse. That's what I asked it. So is that well? And they say yes. Okay, I think that's the metaphor. I could be wrong, but they're saying no. Yeah. They said that's the closest to it that I they can get from me. Okay, but like a speaker of truth, somebody almost like a, the way the wind carries, you know, and when you look at Tibetan flag, when it flaps, every time the wind carries the truth of what that flag know, says, goes but, on. Well, maybe, maybe they're making a joke. It's a lot of hot air. <laughs> <laughs> they are laughing. They are like these little, like, it's kind of funny. It's funny. Um. <laughs> uh. I've been feeling very peaceful and happy, but uh, but I just don't tolerate this destruction. No, I, I completely understand. It's so needless. Um, or you know what, the, the saying that keeps coming up in my mind, it's so 20th century. I just said it's so barbaric. I mean, well, yeah, but it's very 20th century, you know, the world yeah. wars, right. and the Cold War, and the Soviet Union, and the and the American Empire, blah blah. You know, you know. In my peace conference, I, I have to. The Americans have to admit that it was Bush Jr. who broke the UN thing, and invaded a country that didn't attack us, with fake, uh, fake, uh, you know, fake propaganda about as if Saddam Hussein was involved in 9/11, which is absolutely not the case. And um, uh, you know, so Putin that encouraged him. You know? you know, if they can do it, I can do it. You know. So, right, and he's even cited that as an example. Lavrov, Lavrov, and the UN. Yeah. So, so anyway, so, so do J and P have any any uh, clues of, what, of anything we could do right now to ameliorate the situation? We're having a concert tonight. Are you going? Are you going to be at the concert, Richard? Yeah, of, of course. Yeah, of course. Good. Any and, the, and, way, uh, the go first ahead. the first thing that I got was your hands are tied behind your back. But the next image that came to me was the blissfulness of tonight, of whatever you're doing tonight, and that each 
each almost like section of happiness gets sent out there. Okay. Get, Do you know what he's doing there. tonight, Jennifer? I, um, I, I'm just assuming because it's the Tibetan New Year that there's something with that. We're having a we're having a benefit concert, but then I'm I'm, I'm not a musician, but I'm introducing it. And then when I I had to redo my introduction since the, the Ukraine thing happened, because we're getting an Ukrainian group added to the list just at the last minute called the Gogol Bordello. And you know Gogol, the Soviet, you know the the ancient Russian writer, Gogol Bordello. And so I, I I introduce it and I pray for. I get the audience and I get the people on, online. Audience will be praying for peace. And I brought out a blue and a yellow scarf, you know, like Tibetan offering scarf in the thing. Beautiful. And uh, as well as the white scarf that Tibetans offer for Happy New Year. You know? And. Um, praying that, and I, I ordered Putin to stop, but they might edit that out. <laughs> well, P&J just said that he, that tonight's concert, each performance, each piece, that's the way she put it, will send out that kind of healing yeah. energy into the universe that's, to be. that's required to be. Yes, so, but people don't know, you know, what the Tibetan culture knows is that to, to forcefully oppose evil and violence must be done joyfully and lovingly. Yes. Even though it's forceful, but it doesn't hate anybody. It's not the enemy. It's trying to help the people doing bad to realize they're harming themselves. So to soften up and, and look for forgiveness rather than continue in their way of thinking they can keep just killing whoever is aware of their negative stuff. Brilliant. So instead of that, you find out the soft part inside them where they will find some sort of peace themselves, you know. But therefore, joyfulness is critical to yeah. remain joyful. I think that's one of the most amazing messages. Is that, I don't know who's, is that? Oh, that's computer? people at Menla signing on and off. That's <laughs> at his side, it's okay. on his computer. No, okay, just making sure it wasn't one. Um, I feel that the biggest message today is about joy, joyfulness in the face oh, of what you're dealing with. Too. Oh, listen, uh, um, Jennifer, there's a, I have a grandson who okay. passed maybe 12, 13 years ago. Okay, just give me his uh, first name. And he... What's his first yeah. name, Bob? What? What's his first name? Dash. Dash. And he was a well-known artist already in his 20s. Okay, don't tell and, uh, me. Don't, well, hold on, don't tell her anything. Let her just connect okay. to Dash. If you tell me. I if he's around, and I, I, I'd like to speak to him in some way. Yes, okay. Yeah, because if you tell me, then I can't tell you. <laughs> so give me just a second. Okay. 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 Um, hold on. Dash says that he actually meditates with you. So he is around. Oh, well, good. Because he's learned a lot from you. Um, and something about happy birthday. I don't know whose birthday it is. It's around. I don't um, think happy New I Year. Think, I forget. Okay. No, his birthday. Both of our. He's a Leo like me. He was a Leo like me. Okay. In July and so on. But uh, but there is a birthday in the family. You know, he's had a niece. Okay. Who was just born. Who they called uh, the, by his younger brother, father by his younger brother, and um, they called her. They called me the great, and uh, so that means my great granddaughter, uh, second great granddaughter. She has a daughter that is my first great granddaughter. This this uh, dad, wow. and then the the new the girl they called me to approve the name, and the name was Gaia. So I was so thrilled, and excited. Oh, that's I'm very in, I'm very in touch with Gaia. Yes. You know, well, he says he says that he's been sitting in on all of that, but he also says. So I asked him how he passed, and it okay. just felt like, it felt like I, I again I don't know, but it, he's showing me. Just give me a second. He just couldn't breathe. Um, I'm trying to understand it. Was it an was it an accident? Because I yeah. guess okay, that's what he said. I, I'm not sure what kind he of makes, he he has contacted my wife actually, who's more psychic than me, to try to convince his mother 
and grandmother that it was not suicide. It, it was, wasn't. That's what he wants to come in and say. He goes, it was I know, he's accident. always making that point. It was an accident. I did not commit suicide. That's I would exactly. never have done that. You're right on. He's I don't right. want to. He's like, I don't want to come back here and do this again and have to like start. <laughs> we know that. We know that's good, Dash. We know that. Okay. Okay. He's so grateful that you know that in your heart. He okay. says that that means everything. And he knows that's that how. He says, thank you. He says he shouldn't have been at the place that he was at when it happened or mm -hmm. he, and he should have listened, he says, but he never thought it was going to happen that way. Mm -hmm. It was never something he didn't do it on purpose. He mm -hmm. loves his family dearly. There was nothing wrong in his life. He says, in fact, mm -hmm. it was, he says it was joyful. He says there's a couple of hiccups and he says his mind, which if he would have meditated all along, his mind had, and then he's laughing because he's so funny. He's like, he goes, well, I'm an artist. <laughs> it's going to go crazy. It's going to have these highs. And lows yeah, and different. Right. He, goes, he goes, that's what makes it so vibrant. Yeah. And he, he loved music. Music was a big component too for him. Okay. And he did love life. He loved he it. He, he loved it. And he he's still like, does. he still does. Yeah. And he's like, well, I would never. And he says, you have something of his um, that's in the other room that's hanging. Correct. Uh, yeah, I probably do. Yeah. Um, he says it's cricket. He says he tries to make his appearance. He's usually with you when you're in a car or he's usually with you when you're like when you listen to music, because he knows that you get very quiet, obviously. Yeah, and he yeah. says, he goes, I try to shake him up a little bit with music. <laughs> um and, it, and he showed me the Rolling Stones. He's like, it's music that he wouldn't put on that would come on. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Is he, uh, is, he, uh, is he reborn also, in addition to being there? Yeah. Is he also back in some form? Yeah. Is he also going to be an artist? <laughs> yeah, on his way? <laughs> Hold on. I just want to make sure I got that correctly. <laughs> he said yes, but not an effed up one <laughs> he said yes good but now more with music he says oh he good like he's more musical and oh, he says that your great great grand the one the one that was just born yes sees things the way that he used to very bright little child oh, um, no, and his, his own one too They're, all these new children are wonderful uh, you know, trying to help the planet pass this uh, tough po point we're at. I but agree. It's going to be so great, actually. They're coming, they're proving, they're coming proves that it will be so great. Yeah. Joyful, joyful. He, loves you. he does want you to yeah. know that. 21st century, you know, that's why Dalai Lama says 21st century has to stop dragging 20th century crap into it. It has to be a joyful and peaceful century. It will be. But they keep, these things just keep slopping over, you know. Because they're not counting the using the decimal system. <laughs> zero, yeah. zero remains in change. You know, they flopped over from Bush and Bush. Yeah. Say they put Bush and Putin. That's like CIA and KGB. You know? Yeah. They won't let go. You know? He does want to mention that you have, I don't know if you have a ring of his. You have something of his. Either it's a ring. Uh, I don't know. Don't know. No. Uh, Maybe I do somewhere. Yeah. Possibly. He just. Yeah. Did you? Do you have a or like a string or bracelet or a string? There's something of his that it feels like or that reminds you of him. Not that you need to be reminded. Okay. okay. Um, well, I, I'll dedicate. I have something I wear. <laughs> it's a bear. It's a Native American bear bracelet. Okay. I would. I wear a lot, and I will. I'll, 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 when I look at it, I'll think of him. Tell him that. That that will that will really cheer me up to feel that he's still working with us. He's still I often get annoyed with people who die too soon. When they they were born to help us out, yeah. and they have a lot to give, and then they leave too soon. It, I was I, I tend to scold them. So, <laughs> what was interesting? What it does is it makes, so it's not it's not that challenging for you to think about the afterlife or the life because it's all simultaneous. Yes. But he's saying that what it does by somebody young passing away, even if it wasn't, even if they didn't do it themselves and they passed yes. away, um, which he's adamant about. Um, he says that it brought you closer to the other side. It made you more open, even though you already were. 
Okay, that's good. That's good. Even that's back good. Then. So even, yes, even yes. the hurt and the anger you turned into love and compassion. Oh, One of good. The challenging good. thing good, for you good, to do. Good. He does want you to know, and he says you already know this, how much he loves you. Good, good, good. Dash, if I can ask you a question, yeah. just pop this in there. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us, as an artist, you know, you were a person who created great works of art or put put your uh, emotions into a, an object. What's it like for you over there as an artist now? What kind of artwork are you working on? He just showed me colors that I can't even explain. Like he just like if you were to have like, you know how the earth, well, how combustion created the earth. <laughs> he was just showing me like the earth going like this. Uh -huh. um, he was just talking about the fact that think of that with colors, like an explosive color palette. And he mm -hmm. said, there's colors that we can't see here that he gets to work with over there. Oh, really? Wonderful. And, he, and then he talks about how each color is a memory and a fusion of energy. So uh -huh. there's energetic patterns here with color. Because when we look at it, it does something to our brain. We're like, oh, it's soft. Like they've done studies about like red and, you know, a lot of people that have red rooms, they leave the room, yeah. you know, for restaurants yeah. and a whole. So there's colors that put you in bliss, that just by looking at it puts you in bliss. And he oh, says, yeah. creating that kind of artwork and, and really? symbols and with, um, metaphors and language and he says it's fabulous i almost want to oh, say i'm thrilled to hear that because he used yes. to work more in black and white on, on uh, it was young you know but yeah. now he's working with these subtle colors that's that's brilliant that's rainbow that's yeah. beautiful. that's beautiful dash. every shade i wish i could okay. oh, i wish i could remember and how could uh, dash let me just ask you are do you are you creating uh, like an object that that exists over there in your realm that everyone can see, or is it just a mental image of that concept? Can other people see your works of art? That's my question. He says, I am, oh shoot. I am creating a moment in time in this etheric continuum. Beautiful. So it's creating that you create the moment of time is the creation, almost like, you know, we've had Stephen Hawking talk about floppy yeah. disks yeah. and how you pull that out. And that's the moment of time. Speaking of Stephen Hawking, uh, I will say that Steve Jobs <laughs> name came up the other day. Bob, have you ever met Steve Jobs or aware of Steve in no, any way? I have he, met. I did meet Steve Jobs. Once thank so. you. Because he said that he wanted to talk to you. So go ahead, Steve. Oh, really? You're oh. always welcome. Uh, please take a seat. Luana, please have everybody move out. Let Steve have a, sh a seat. And what do you want to say to Bob? Because you asked to be here. And Jennifer has done work with his daughter. He said, thank you. He says he crashes all of your lectures. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's great. And he says, I'm enthused to hear... Just like, and he showed me what you and I do, Richard, with what you're doing as well to the people here as well as over there. Definitely wonderful. And so it's it's a it's a it's a thank you. It's communication. Wonderful. Oh. Can I say something to him? Mm -hmm. I, I, would, I would love to say something to him because when I met him, I was with some other people, and uh, it was about when we were found we were getting to bed house going. You know, to for the sake of His Holiness, at the request of His Holiness, to preserve the Tibetan people's culture in this time of tremendous ethnocide, and uh, he was immediately inspired to make a Tibet house in San Francisco, and uh, we were starting in New York, of course, so that's where I live. You know, and then I was completely ready to go both, full guns on both. Coast. I, th I thought it was each one would strengthen the other, and the other one of the other silly people who was relevant though, unfortunately, uh, immediately said, "No, no, we have to do New York first, you know, and 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 sort of pushed him back. And I've always regretted it, and I've regretted I couldn't see him again. Somehow it just never crossed paths, and um, you know, and that I couldn't do that. And I do intend to make one in San Francisco. So 
if he has any magic to work in his hometown there. Or what's his opinion okay. about, about yeah, what's I mean, his opinion as well as in LA, but also in LA. But I definitely want to. Uh, it's it's ever since he said it, I want to do it. The other person who was there wanted to do it, but one person obstructed it, and then it haven't been able to get back to it. But we will. So, so just tell him that. Tell him, thank him for that inspiration. And it's been with me. I never forget it. Absolutely never. He, he says that it's probably better that it didn't happen at the same time. Yeah, maybe. San Francisco has gone through a lot of different changes. Yes, yeah, true, of course. And so yeah. he said, he said, I love that you say that. I love that. Um, I was disappointed too. Mm -hmm. um, I was too into my head trying to control the communications here. <laughs> yeah. we'll get there I think time will be right in the long term maybe. he goes but hold on Good. I'm grateful for all of the work in preserving what the Tibetan um, with the Tibetan well, house well his 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 computer electronic revolution and his his Zen design and his heartfelt opening up of the cyborg potentials of human beings and opening their imagination the way he has is something we're all really grateful for. I know. We really are. I love it. So is he is he reborn again? Is he is he going to be a woman the next life? Or is he already <laughs> in the, the body of a woman? He just he was so funny. He, when you said that he just showed long legs. Um <laughs> being a woman but like when you were going through that process like i'm when he passed away i cried i never met him but i cried my it was just the crazy because uh -huh. i felt this connection and it took him a long time to make me even believe that i was talking to him it uh -huh. took his daughter you know his youngest daughter making an appointment he's like now do you believe me <laughs> that you're talking uh -huh. to me I see. which was one of the most amazing experiences for her. Um, she's so sweet. But when you were expressing that, like the imaginations, and he was going through, he goes, yes, unfortunately, sometimes it makes people just stay here. Their imaginations might go, but they don't do anything else. Uh -huh. Also make them go out and do more things and to grasp, uh -huh. you know, to get more um physical information to bring into the computer system uh -huh, uh -huh. that makes any sense anyway sure um the idea of not just mentally thinking about what things should be but right. actually going out and physically experiencing nature experiencing the world bringing that into your work yes no he says he's going to come back as a dog <laughs> but he knows you can't do that but he's <laughs> <laughs> well well, some people say, you know, they're they're working on it. They're thinking about it. You know, they're planning it. And so, Steve, you did want to come by. You asked uh, Jennifer yes. and I just casually. Wanted, had this, what did he you want to say? Thanks, Steve. I'm very he happy. Wanted, he wanted to honor um, the work that you've done. Thank you. That's wonderful, Steve. I'm very grateful. Oh, so when he was telling me there was one person, he was telling me he met you once. I'm sorry I got that confused. Well, so that's why I asked, you know, had you ever met? And it was interesting because Bob's first reaction was no, did. but then he went back to the moment when they did. So it's fascinating because he tapped Jennifer on the shoulder. She wrote to me and just said, there's a lot of people who want to talk to Bob, including Steve. And I thought, oh, well, I well, you know, we can't oh, yeah. talk about it. Let's just I'm, see what I'm he says. Really Let's invite him. Really. I'm, I'm very thrilled. Uh, you know, it's a fascinating way to show that a, that someone like Jennifer is literally a cell phone to the other side. And if you have something you want to ask or learn or work on, you can. And I always say, you know, Jennifer agrees with me. Ask three mediums. Ask yeah. them all the same questions. Get all the material together and make an informed conclusion or opinion about what you should or shouldn't do. It's not just one, mm -hmm. and we're mediums. We're all like, like you, Robert. You've been meditating your whole life. There's nobody I've ever met who could probably turn off the filter and walk down into a mandala yeah. right in front of you <laughs> because you're aware of it. And the rest of us are like, where is he? What's he doing? What's happening? But the, the more we talk about this and open ourselves up to talk about it, the more we realize it's self-reflexive, your subjective sure. experience 
But at the same time, when you have all the objective details together, we can talk to Steve. We can talk to Robert. We can talk to Jennifer. We can learn new things about our journey and ourselves. I sound like I'm wrapping it up, but I am I? I don't know. Jennifer, are you guys okay? Time is, Good. Time is about an hour now. Yeah, time is about yes. an hour. I would love well, to stay longer. I have well, a lot there, of hold on. Is there anything, that, anything else that's... Again. Well, hold on, hold on. Is there any, Luana, she's got the list. She's in charge. Is there anybody else on this list that needs to talk to Bob? Luana, I don't know why everybody's making me cry. Luana says, thank you for your work as well. <clears throat> she says, thank you for your work as well. Oh, thank you, Luana. Um, yes, there is somebody else that wants to come by. Hold on. I'm sorry, I'm not familiar, but this... Who was the previous Dalai Lama? The 13th. The 13th? Okay. And I'm sorry, did you know the 13th Dalai Lama? Oh, well, not in this life. He, he passed life. away before I was born. What was okay. his, what was know his name? In previous life, I believe, yes. What was his first name? Uh, the 13th Dalai Lama? Yeah. Uh, his name was, uh, what was it? Uh, Gatso, of course, his last name, but oh, it's, it? okay. it's okay. It's okay. Go. He's gonna, already here. He wants to talk to you. I'm going to go with the 13th. And so I just need to understand it. Um, what he's going to pass on. Hold on. Tupten Gatso, that's right. His name was Tupten Gatso. And the Tupten was my name as a novice monk, which came from him. Okay. But, but, not, but not directly, but through, uh, through someone, because when you're ordained by someone, then their first name, they, the one who ordains you, gives you the first name as a monk, then you get the first name. So the one who ordained me as a monk, who was the Dalai Lama's senior tutor, had apparently was ordained by the 13th. Okay. So what does he want to say? What is he? In previous what life, I knew him, and uh, I liked him, and, and my wife is calling me. As I, okay. I tell, hold on a second. <laughs> what, so what, what is it that he wants to say to Bob? Yes. He says, tell Bob not to worry about Russia. Oh, good. No, I love Russia. It's no, but why? Why would he say that? He knows you're worried about it, but he, he specifically wants you to not. Why? Why would he, he says, say that? There are forces up there as well as here. He's showing me how everything's combined that are working for the highest good of what's, gonna, of what's happening. Oh, good. So that out of negativity comes positivity. Out of darkness comes light. Yes, yes. Out of yes, these... I think Russia is being free. You know, my 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 Geshe Wangel teacher, uh, in when I was uh, forty one or something, thirty one, when I got my PhD, he just said, "What did you learn?" Blah blah. Then he said, "You didn't learn to speak fluent Russian." <laughs> I didn't get around to that. You didn't ask me to. You didn't recommend it. He said, "Well, oh," he said, "When you're an old man." He said, if you cannot teach in Russian, your work will not be finished and you will not be happy. <laughs> wow. He said, and I tried in the intervening 50 years, what, 31, <laughs> now, like, yeah, 50 years. I tried on and off to learn Russian. I know a little bit, but uh, I can't speak fluently. But I have a good translator and I have lectured in Russia and I always am very moved when I do. And uh, yeah. there's something about 13 Dalai Lama was very involved with Russia. Yes, that's what it feels like. He built the first temple there in St. Petersburg in 1904, 1903, 1904. And, um, and the czar, you know, tried to help him. And there's a long story. He, he, and is, I, that he, is that what he is that what he is that what he wanted to and, say and to my Bob? Geshe Wangel's, you have to say my Geshe Wangel's own teacher was the 13th Dalai Lama's emissary to the czar. And went back and forth from Tibet, and he was Mongolian actually, but Buryat Mongolian. But he went back and forth from Russia. He spoke Russian, and I'm not his incarnation though. But I, but you know, we we sort of still in the same team. <laughs> is that what uh, is that what the thirteenth wanted to say to Bob? Yeah, just that he doesn't have to worry. He does not oh, have to nice. worry. Thank you. Good. Yes. Hey, okay. I, I can't believe I said All right. that. How good. It was wonderful. It was so Thank wonderful. you, Jennifer. And for uh, our I, audience. It's an honor to meet you, Jennifer, really. Honor to meet and you. I'm, I'm so honored, and I hope I have a chance again. And actually, someone else who would like to really meet you is my wife, I know. 
I would love to meet she's her. She's kind of shy, actually, strangely. Once she gets going, she's not at all shy. Well, you don't, she doesn't need to be on the podcast. She can just contact Jennifer directly, and she'll we'll be happy that. to talk to her. I would really. love to talk to her. She can talk on the phone. She doesn't have to do it. We do this because Bob is... Bob's a teacher. No, no, there and might can't... be something very interesting if we sit it together to talk about an experience we had when we were first getting together. Oh, to yeah, I know with. that experience. I'm already getting it. it. I'm already getting Jennifer's it. Jennifer's already seeing it. Do you want, Jennifer, quickly, what is it you're getting? That you knew that you guys would be together for a very long time. That's right. And, and, I, and, I, I've heard... and you didn't even, neither one of you actually were ready for it at all. We were like kind of, but well, yeah, he, he was, was a monk. He was a monk, and she was oh, married. Right. So, <laughs> well, that's what I'm like. It's not working. They're like they're showing me like there was no way, but they but they were told that this is it. You guys get yourselves together because you're supposed to be together. That's right. Yeah. Guess you one guy was really key. He was the yenta there for sure. Wow. <laughs> Very good. All right, we'll have a great uh, concert tonight, Bob. We really appreciate okay, you coming in. Okay, you too. Enjoy. We love you. Thank you, very good. Thank you so much. Uh, Jennifer, would you like to attend that concert? I it's, would uh, it's at eight. It starts at 8 o'clock uh, Eastern time. time. Yeah. So I don't know what time it is. I'll send not. her all the details. I can send you a link that you could, a comp link. That would, be, that would be wonderful. Do I have Jennifer's email? Uh, yes, the, the one that I sent to uh, Justin. So uh, I'll, okay. I'll resend yeah. it to then you. I'll send you a comp link. I will do that. Okay. okay? And I got to go because... Thank All right, you. very good. Right. Intercom call and Bye, Bob. Very okay. good. All right, okay, cool. thank you so much. And thank you, Rich. It's, it's always an honor. It's really a pleasure. <laughs> what a treat. He's such a rascal. He's a rascal, too, you know, but he's really sweet. <laughs> sweet as can be. Very okay, good. Rich. Thank we'll you so much. Okay? All right. Don't worry. We will. Very good. Thank Wonderful. you. You guys are flipping me out. All right. I love you. I love you a lot. Okay. Thanks. Okay, bye. Great. <laughs> Okay, right. I'm, I gotta go. Okay. All right. That's the. I'm here. I will pause it. Well, first I'll say, let's do our goodbye, traditional goodbye. Jennifer, thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in, audience. Thanks, Luana. Thanks, Thirteenth. Thanks, Dash. Thanks, Steve. Thanks to all of our friends on the flip side for helping us navigate this very unusual podcast today. Why well, am I crying? <laughs> <laughs> well. It's the weirdest feeling. I've been crying this whole time, practically. Isn't yeah. that interesting? And it, is that a, a crying of release, or is it of happiness, or what is it? It's happiness. It's happiness. It's just a weird. It's like when I met Jesus. It's the weirdest thing I'm feeling right now. Sorry. I was there. I was there. I was filming you. I, it's been so crazy for me. Okay. And, no. Okay. Well, say goodbye, and then I'll I'll stop. I'll pause the recording. We love you. Love you. Love you. This has been Hacking the Afterlife podcast with Jennifer Schaefer. For more information, jenniferschaefer.com, martinizone.com, or richmartini.com. Hacking the Afterlife documentary is available on Gaia.com via Amazon Prime.